Hello and welcome to today's CAS Inspire webinar called CAS Inspire, the Ofsted Ready Session for Primary Computing Leads. I think it's a subject we all talk a lot about, don't we, Ofsted, particularly deep dives. My name is Alison Sheldon and I'm the host for this session. I'm also joined by my colleague Wendy Piccini, who will be moderating today's session and bringing you questions to today's panel if time allows. During the session, please use the question window on the right hand side of your screen to ask questions. All attendees are in listen only mode. And if you're using social media, great if you can hashtag the event in, which is hashtag CAS Inspire. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the panel. This afternoon, I'm delighted to be joined by Satya Marimanda and Neil Rukas. Now, Satya is an assistant head teacher digital strategy lead across Newington Green and Rotherfield Primary Schools, where she teaches computing from years one to six. She's also an MIEE, and that's a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, and she's also NCCE STEM Learning Facilitator and CAS Community Leader for Islington. We're also very lucky to have Neil. He's a senior lecturer, sorry, he's a senior lecturer in computing education at the University of Hertfordshire, and a member of the Centre for STEM Education. In addition to this, he's a computing tutor on the primary PGCE courses at University College London and Brunel University London. He's also an external examiner for Edgehill University. Thank you so much, both of you very busy people, for finding the time to join us. So I'm going to hand over now to Satya and Neil. Okay, thank you. I just uh, share the presentation and if one of you could just let me know if you can see that all right that'd be great perfect neil perfect okay that's great i'm um, so uh, good evening everybody and welcome and thank you uh, both for and allow me to speak today um with satya so over the next uh, 25 minutes or so we're going to be covering these topics we'll look briefly at the quality of education which is part of the current Ofsted inspection framework and then focus on the intent. We'll look at some of the questions that you might potentially be asked during a deep dive when computing is looked at in detail. And then Satch is kind of going to share her experiences of going through an inspection. And then we'll finish with myself again, looking at implementation impact and then a quick reflection on what you perhaps need to do next. So within the inspection framework, we've got this quality of education area, as it were, that is really important we show evidence of, and it's split into the intent, implementation, and impact. And with this intent statement, it's really focusing on the curriculum and what we want our learners to be able to do. So our curriculum, it's got to be really ambitious, it's got to be suitable for all children, and not just focusing on certain facts but really developing people's knowledge and also allowing them to have the skills that they need for employment in the future future study whether it be higher education or in a subject of interest to them it needs to be well sequenced and also mean that progression is there and that we can see it do that it's very clearly evidenced and also this is often assessed through conversations of senior leadership team including uh, subject leaders something that's also in here is cultural capital and there's the definition that is within the inspection framework and for computing we might think of this in three separate areas so perhaps the people involved which is Ada Lovelace, Grace Hopper, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. But with those examples that we're sharing, it's really important also that the curriculum we present to you is culturally relevant. So we're perhaps showing um, role models that are from a similar background to the pupils that we're teaching, for example. With regards to the technology, we might think about how it can impact on people, uh, plus that sometimes this impact might be negative. And finally, looking at opportunities to really enrich the curriculum, so might be extracurricular activities and bringing people in, for example. With regards to the other two statements, and we'll look at how we might evidence these in 
um, a bit. For implementation, we're thinking about the pedagogy use, how the subjects taught, how we assess the subject and give feedback to our pupils, and as well as speaking with teachers here, it might be that we actually, that I mean, yourself and that's the inspector speak to pupils to get their view. And for the impact, the actual um, outcome of what the learners um, produce, so the, uh, the skills and knowledge developed and what they ultimately achieve, this is no longer solely based on um, academic success and also uh, sort of not just on a load of data, but um, it might be through talking to pupils and work scrutiny. And uh, I know Satya in a minute will show how she evidences that as well. So looking at intent in a bit more detail, and in particular, the progression of knowledge and skills and how you might show that when your scheme is working across curricular links. And we're very fortunate now that we've got the teach computing curriculum and the progression in here is very clear. And often we've got these diagrams that show sort of the sequence through the various units. And I've seen in a, a number of places that this has actually been documented as well. So the various statements there are presented. This is from the uh, Primary Computing Coordinators UK Facebook group where this example was taken from a load of feedback on that. It has been really nice. And also something that was on uh, that group, a uh, post from um, Hannah Charlotte, which uh, the, the link is to there. Um, she recently um, had Ofsted in and they did a deep dive in computing. And the various questions that were asked are, are on the screen there now. So um, the stuff around the national curriculum, for each of their lessons, it was mapped out how, what they covered. And for progression, that was also very clearly shown in their documents. Um, Hannah in the post talks about these in, in more detail. And um, through uh, providing evidence of the work that they do, how they um, actually have uh, examples of children's work to, to show all this stuff came across um, really well. Also something we've got on the CAS site, and I've done a bit.ly link uh, for this at the bottom of here, bit.ly slash CAS dash Ofsted dash Quest. And I'm sure I'm, uh, I'm Wendy or Alison can share a link in the, in the chat at some point is there's uh, an A4 sheet which has got uh, a number of other questions you might consider on there as well. So lots of things to consider for if an inspector actually does talk to us about computing and um, good to think actually can I discuss with them these various points, have I got evidence of it to enable me to talk around it. So um, that's one example of what has been seen. And I'm now going to pass over to Satya to talk about um, her recent experiences of an inspection. So, um, so if you want to tell me when to move on to each slide, um, I will progress those um, as we go. So um, over to you. Um, so I um, experienced um, an officer inspection in my previous school, which was Wembley primary school, which was a four form entry school where class teachers were delivering their computing lessons uh, using schemes of work. Um, uh, it was very early on in the year, 18th and 19th of September, so it was week three. Um, so uh, we were sort of thrown in at the uh, deep end. Um, and uh, I put the link in there for the full Ofsted report. Uh, computer in, computing in particular um, stood out in the report. Um, if we can move on to the next one, please, Leo. Yeah. Um, in terms of what to expect, um, so we had a deep dive into foundation subjects, including computing. Um, and what uh, the inspectors wanted to see was a short recap of previous learning. So sticky knowledge and jumping into new learning quickly. Um, they uh, had a particular conversation about teachers having confidence that pupils have um, learned and consolidated um, 
previous learning in previous year groups and we shouldn't have to reteach um, something it should be just a quick um, revisit um, ensure uh, that the cross-curricular learning does not dilute the subject skills or knowledge so um, in the case of like I said with foundation subjects so for example if they're writing a persuasive letter in history the focus should be on the historical side not um, not the persuasive writing language features so that was something they were very keen to see um, in terms of computing, because we had digital leaders, the inspectors um, spoke to them, so they wanted to ask the children about their um, experience of the subject and their enjoyment of it. Um, they asked them about a recent unit that, that was covered. Um, uh, following the um, sort of observation uh, lessons, the inspectors were keen to discuss progression within the school, um, including asking children uh, why a certain lesson was being taught at that point in the academic year. So again, um, kind of being aware of the journey that pupils have had um, in, in that subject, not just focusing on that sort of that unit or that lesson. Um, and also um, what kind of, what are we build, 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 sorry, building up to um, in sort of the upcoming lessons. Um, when uh, we also had a meeting with all um, subject leaders, and um, here they wanted to see the clear endpoints, um, and which included examples of learning either on the computer or printed in the case of computing. Um, and one thing I want to reiterate is the quote that Neil had earlier from Hannah, at least my experience of it was that they're not out to get you. Um, they were, they're, they're obviously very thorough um, and they, they, I don't want to I don't, maybe prompt is the right word, but they did try to give opportunities for us to um, sort of give, give examples or sh or share um, what what they were looking for. So my experience wasn't that they were um, looking to catch us out in any way, but that yeah, that's my experience and Hannah's. Hopefully, everyone else's as well. Um, thank you, Neil. If we can move on. Um, I've just got some. Um, of advice leading up to assessment um, and evidence, um, but it, that can't happen without planning being there in the first place. So just a um, couple of pieces of advice there. If your lessons are being um, de delivered by class teachers, um, you may want to consider a consistent platform, especially for coding. Um, it, it helps um, non-specialist teachers um, who may lack um, confidence in the computing teaching. And quite often, if you've got a consistent platform, um, the learning is also uh, being saved automatically. Um, ensure that there is a focus on computing vocabulary, knowledge and skills, so children shouldn't be referring to the tool or the app. So not, you know, we did scratch instead of we learned how to use selection. So similar example in, in writing would be they didn't learn how to pencil, how to pen. The focus should be on the skill of the subject. Um, and then uh, plan for project-based and cross-curricular units where possible. Um, so the evidence is self-created, uh, meaning that you, you've got the evidence, the artifact being produced. Um, and also this way in uh, schools where it's not by a uh, subject specialist delivering the learning, it's more likely to be, to be taught if it's uh, killing two birds with one stone. Thank you, Neil. Move on. Um, in terms of assessment and evidence, um, so I've worked in uh, different schools where, so currently I'm the subject specialist delivering the learning, so I'm in charge of all the assessment and evidence. Previously, where the Ofsted um, inspection took place in Wembley Primary, I was the subject leader, but class teachers were delivering the learning. So I've sort of made some recommendations for assessment and evidence, starting with on a, on a level where perhaps there's no assessment happening at the moment and, and, and leading up to what a subject specialist might do. Um, so one key thing being work towards a model where the assessment is not just a tool to evidence curriculum coverage. So where it's not a box ticking task, treat it the way the purpose of the assessment should be always to come back and improve pupil outcomes, not um, have, you know, have we done this or is, it, is the teacher doing their job kind of thing. Um, Treat the subject like you would with any other subject. So include opportunities for AFL. So you know things like knowledge harvest, KWL charts at the start of lessons, mini quizzes, key questions. 
Um, if you are sort of at a very early stage of establishing assessment and evidence, um, you could start with asking teachers to include the final artifact. Um, so, for example, if it was a PowerPoint presentation they were working on, or screenshot or videos of um, one working towards, working at, and working above pupils' learning. Um, Pair this with regular pupil voice and learning walks uh, or informal dropping. So you know that what's being evidenced is um, not a one-off, it's consistent with uh, the teaching um, and the expectations for your curriculum. Um, and depending on the apps and platforms being used, um, learning for all other pupils um, will be saved or generated automatically. Um, so again, depending on what your uh, uh, school subscribe to quite often, especially with paid subscriptions, you're going to, you're going to have the ability for uh, all of people's learning to be saved automatically. Um, thank you, Neil. Um, I've just screenshot an example of how cur currently I, I um, evidence my assessment. So uh, because being a subjective specialist, I'm in charge of um, years one to six. So I uh, track uh, three pupils. Uh, across all year groups um, and all all the pupils in year um, two and year six for end of um, key stage expectations. So what I've used there is um, Microsoft Sway, which is um, really helpful for kind of being able to present mixed media um, uh, files and I'm able to um, organize it quite quickly. I've, obviously, I've uh, covered up uh, pupil names, um, but you could again I've, I've put some suggestions on the right there it could be if where if the teacher is the is class teachers are presenting evidence just a folder, folder on the shared drive with all year groups divided further into half terms or units it could be a powerpoint presentation word what microsoft Sway or prezi so work with your school and your curriculum whatever works um best with trying to sort of keep in mind teacher work teacher workload um, so without making it too strenuous for them. Um, thank you, Neil. Um, and in terms of uh, giving teachers uh, something to mark, um, sort of use their uh, assess against, um, I've included a link there for computing, but I've, I've set, set a asterisk that with needs to be adapted to, to suit your um, schemes of work and, and translated for non-specialist teachers. I've, I've put an example there um, because even being a subject specialist, um, I find I keep having to refer back to the national curriculum uh, to remind myself of what the expectation is. But even when I do, I, obviously it's just a two-page document. It, so if as a subject specialist, I still need to refer back to and go go back and maybe do some research on it. For non-specialists, it's 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 going to be another language, especially the coding strand. So um, bear that in mind and um, kind of adapt it to your um, school's way of working. Um, thank you, Neil. If we can move on, um, and then this is my suggestion for if the, so. The first one being just basic one one pupil, um, uh, three people. Sorry, track per class you could develop that further depending on where you are with your school um, teachers being able to identify all pupils in the class um, as working towards at and above obviously there's going to be other gradings as well but i've just gone with those three as an example um, and again breaking it down so um, thinking about where the children fit within those three columns so it would be a case of those statements are available for teachers and teachers can say okay Pupil X, Y, Z would fit under the working towards column, working at, or working above. So kind of moving on from uh, those track three children to teachers having a more um, detailed overview um, of where pupils stand with computing learning. Next one, please, Neil. And this is um, an example of how I'm um, doing my tracking at the moment. So this would apply for subject specialists who have that kind of overview of the whole whole school. Um, so recording assessments um, and uh, evidence for three track pupils uh, against their weekly objectives. Um, and then for all pupils in year two and year six for um, end of key stage two expectations. Uh, that Excel sheet there uh, is available on TES, obviously you need to um, adapt it to suit yourself. So 
those are just the national curriculum objectives, I pair those with my um, learning objectives. So again, being sort of child friendly uh, and in terms of if someone was looking at my monitoring, non-specialist friendly as well. I think that's my last one, yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Satya. And um, what I really like is that you very much show the, the practical side of what it's like to be in the classroom and delivering this stuff. So thanks for sharing that. So in order to evidence actually that we are doing all this stuff, a, a decent subject leader folder is one way you might do that. And there's a, a list of things that you might consider including as there and a lot of them we've mentioned already tonight but particularly a uh, development or action plan that shows that you know where you are at the minute with computing uh, this is where you've come from and this is where you're going and um, particularly um, can use an example such as said about that if your assessment processes in computing are developing often on uh, going to school that's something that maybe isn't developed as, um, as well as the curriculum as a whole, if you can uh, show that you are working towards that, that's great. And there's a, a few other bits in here you might consider, actual surveys of both staff, pupils, parents, so that you are perhaps tailoring your lessons to uh, their interests, uh, showing how budgetary spenders have uh, gone on, um, acceptable use policies um, and also online safety stuff as well and there are uh, statements related to safe and responsible use of technology in the curriculum but that also needs to tie in with your school's um, safeguarding policies uh, how we teach things say, around um, uh, well-being PSHE and so on and so forth and a few thoughts about how you might make links with diversity inclusion we mentioned about uh, cultural capital by thinking about appropriate role models suitable uses of technology and making use of opportunities to really enrich the curriculum might be trips such as um, uh, online or virtual ones i know that uh, certainly a lot of places um, now are starting to open up again uh, the colleagues at the science museum are extremely busy with visits at the minute and also we might add some targets into our subject development plan to think about how we can uh, encourage diversity and inclusion within computing. You may not be aware of the CAS Include Working Group. I'll put the, the link there for you. And they've got some really nice guidance about how to develop your subject in this manner. So we have hopefully shared some um, decent uh, guidance and do please bear in mind that this is uh, stuff that other people perhaps experience that might uh, be useful uh, to include but it's certainly not um, the be all and end all so um, yeah just just the, the caveat that um, hopefully your uh, experience of perhaps an inspection uh, will be similar and this will be useful but it's very much um, this needs to be appropriate for your school um, and what you do suitable for, for your children. So I think, um, as we've probably got some uh, questions. questions or thoughts yeah. there. Um, can I just say that, that was, I've made so many notes from the hat. So, so thank you very much. That was brilliant. Wendy, do we have any, any questions? We do have some questions. Um, the first question is, could uh, you tell us a bit more about the tools that you use to provide evidence for pupils' work? And I think it's something that um, teachers are always interested in finding out more, you know, how can I um, make sure that I've got enough evidence uh, for the visit? So, yeah. Um, so, uh, those uh, pictograms that you can see are um, on J2E on LGFL. So um, quite a quite a lot of London-based schools are subscribed with them. So um, within your LGFL subscription, you you get a lot of uh, free tools. So pupils um, save their work at the end of the learning, and then in terms of teacher view at the back end, you can go into classes and then look at every uh, pupil's folder. So it, it it's all sort of 
uh, automatically generated for you. Um, those uh, those are these are year one examples. Those are meant to be X-rays <laughs> that they've drawn. So again, that's another again in J2E. That's another um, tool that they've used. Um, so. Uh, I'm not promoting or, or saying any of those, the ones I'm, I know of. Um, Purple Mash uh, is another tool where uh, people's work is can be saved easily individually. Um, Discovery Education, um, they have a particularly uh, good sort of coding strand as well. Um, the, with Discovery, what you find is they're gonna, uh, from year one to six, the coding platform looks the same with the uh, challenge, uh, Sort of obviously progression of challenge going through as they go through across the years um learning being saved um and again what i know of discovery education is that uh, pupils can't go in go on to the next challenge until they've completed challenge one um i'm trying to think which other ones i know something that often gets mentioned on social media is the use of seesaw which uh, allows you to um uh, sort of very easily take um, images or um, share videos that children have produced yeah. of their work and also tag the individual and tag certain objectives related yeah. to that uh, as well and that can be quite powerful also for children to reflect on their own work too and another thing that might be beneficial is if you've got a learning platform such as Google Classroom or the Microsoft Office suite perhaps having a, a shared uh, folder where examples of pupils work can be looked at yeah. as well yeah and th those are so the pa paper copies are when we did an unplugged lesson so I just thought that's just a photo of it then I took videos of their um, learning with coding scratch if you sign up for a teacher account and that one's uh, free to sign up for you can create classes and students and then pupils can save their work online um, and then with um, microbit you can download the code but it, it will only work if you've got the physical microbit too then demonstrate it. But if you don't, um, again, re record the screen. A lot, a lot of my evidence is recording, screenshotting or recording the, the pupils doing something. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. That's really good. Wendy, we could have one very, very quick, very quick oh. question, very quick answer, if that's OK. Yes, I was just going to add um, that a lot of things that you just mentioned there um, are picked up in community meetings. So if there's people watching who think, oh, I, I, haven't, I don't really know about CESOR yet and I'd like to know more about that, do go along to one of our CAS community meetings because um, we've certainly covered all those things that you've mentioned and that they keep, even if you can't attend one, you know, when you want to keep looking on the site because they're often repeated. Um, so yeah, reach out. But yes, there is a follow up question that came in response to that. I think people who are watching are interested to, to know um, how often you're assessing. So they're asking, is this for every lesson, you know, in terms of the assessment, the evidence? So they're kind of trying to work out what the workload is really with regards to this. So this is from a subject specialist view. Yes, I am. Um, I um, assess it. I am assessing every lesson, um, but I don't. The nature of computing, I'm not necessarily evidencing every lesson. So it might be we build up to a project, and the final project is, is the evidence. So that that pictogram lesson was a one-off, and that one, um, all it took for me is go into LGFL, go to my class, and screenshot the pupils learning, which was saved. Um, but if we work towards a project, then um, I'll, I'll video the final um, projects. For example, with when we used um, microbits, uh, they created a doorbell for the deaf. So I, I videoed them. They explained to me how the the technology works. I'm not evidencing every lesson. So that's where I said kind of build, build in projects or cross curricular learning where you can because the final artifact is evidence. You can't get to the final artifact without doing all the previous sort of the build up to it. So that's how I'm evidencing it. Um, but if it's a one off, yes, I, I do. Um, I'm not, this is for, for me as a subject specialist, I'm not suggesting class teachers need to start doing this. I, that's that was my sort of graduating up to subject specialist. I don't think it. Um, T teachers can't be expected to do, do that not for, and not for whole class um you know thank you that that's been brilliant I, i've learned so many things this afternoon so thank you very much to satya and neil and to the audience for joining us today and to wendy for doing all the tricky bits as well for me thank you wendy um please if you want to share your personal highlights highlights from today's session via social media don't forget it's hashtag cas inspire
Now, at the end of the webinar, there'll be a short survey and we'd be really grateful if you could take a minute to complete that for us, please. Um, please spread the word about CARS. Like Wendy said, loads of great community meetings going on um, off to, you know, about Ofsted, but lots and lots of other computing issues as well. Um, if you're not a member, CARS, then you know, make sure you are check out those meetings. And join us next Wednesday at four o'clock for our next primary CAS Inspire session. We'll be discussing inspirational ideas for computing in the EYFS, something very close to my heart. So I'm sure that'll be just as good as this week's. So again, thank you for joining us and we hope to see you next time. And goodbye, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, thank you also for the really positive feedback that we're receiving in the chat. So it's really nice to know that people have found it helpful. So thank you for that as well. No worries. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.